Well, good morning and welcome back to City Line. With me, I have two powerhouses in the house on the comfy couch, and they are here to talk about uh, the Tacoma Historical Society and some of the things that are going on there. And this is the segment where I said to you, take notes, and I mean it because there's so much that you need to see. And I am an avid believer that you must know our history in our community. So. Without much further ado, please join me in welcoming Deb Friedman. You are the treasurer of Tacoma Historical Society. Welcome back, my Thank dear. Thank you. It is so great to see you. And as always, those earrings are killing me. <laughs> they're little books. I don't think that our audience can see them, but they're like little tiny books that open up and it just... It just fits the librarian in you, doesn't it? Thank you. It does. And this beautiful woman, Holly Stewart. Good morning. Good morning. You are the program manager at the Job Carr Cabin Museum. Welcome back, my dear. Thank you. Good to have you here. All right, so let's talk about her story, Tacoma Museum of Destiny. First off, you, you've been on here before representing Tacoma Historical Society. So is this different? Tell us what's going on. New logo? So for six months, we're doing business as the Tacoma Her Story Society. Yes! Because we think that. that for a little too long, history has been his story, not as much her story. And we thought that it was important that our name change in uh, representation of that, that it not just be his story anymore. I love that. So so we're going we're gonna to try that on there. So... Um, this is an awareness about what history has to say um, and how it was built around women and not, and not just as Mrs. Is that correct? Right. I think one of the most difficult things is doing research on women. Often you can't even find their first name. No, you There'll can't. There'll be Mrs. So-and-so or the obituary will say he left a widow. Yes. And she doesn't even have a name. And part of that is you lose your name when you marry, traditionally. And so what was her maiden name? And um, we've just felt that it was important to, to bring that history back. It and is. we have the tools now to do more genealogy than we could before. Yes. So we thought it was important to include women in our history yes. more so. My mom is a huge genealogy uh, nut. And this is like talking to my mom. And, and also, I want to say, women are no longer property. So we don't have to change our last name anymore. Uh, why now? Is it, I mean, what's so significant about this timing, Deb? A couple of reasons for that. Uh, you may remember. You may remember that last year we did an exhibit looking back at Tacoma in 1918. Yes. So we're thinking a hundred years ago what was going on, and during that time there was a growing suffrage movement around the world, and women were taking larger roles yeah. while men were at war. And so we wanted to follow up on that one, what was happening in 1919. And of course, we're looking at the centennial of the suffrage amendment. And we also wanted to do it now rather than in 20, because we wanted to talk about how long the process took, yes. how much work was involved, that Congress may have passed the amendment in the spring of 1919, but then it took months and months and another year before 20 or two thirds of the states ratified for that. And part of that also is we, in building awareness of that, we wanted to create curriculum materials for teachers. So we wanted to spend this time getting that curriculum together so that when we come up on the actual centennial in 20, the teachers are ready to teach that unit. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh, the teacher in me, I wish I was still teaching because man, I would whip that unit. I love it. <laughs> so, let's move, so let's talk about those curriculum materials that we can expect to see at the exhibit. And I think we have some pictures to go mm -hmm. along with it. I think it. we do. Um, so we have a section on women as photographers. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I love the, the her keeps coming in there. And I actually met a woman who had a business called Her Story. So we have framed pictures of Tacoma that were taken by a woman whose business was called Her Story. So we've got some of those and some pictures of taken by some incredible photographers in Tacoma, some artists. We have banners loaned to us from University of Puget Sound about the um, artist Abby Williams Hill. Um, so we're excited about that. We have a section on women in business. We have a section on women in sports. We have a section on women um, breaking barriers, uh, that uh, phrase of the glass ceiling, yes. literally. Um, and so we also have a section on women writing history. There we go. Um, and it was very, very easy to fill a whole pedestal full of books 
history of Tacoma written by women, and that was really rewarding. I love that. And Holly, you have an interesting exhibit on this. Uh, you have a section on pioneering women purposely without faces. Why? Well, there's so many strong women who were part of Tacoma's early earliest days. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Dev and I worked together on trying to identify those women. But a lot of times it's it's difficult, like she yeah. said, to find the names. It's even more difficult sometimes to find the photographs that go with yes. those women. Uh, and so the part of their history has been hidden because there, there are fewer Ugh. pictures of them. Um, but working together, we were able to come up with a great stories of women who were here in Tacoma's founding and business owners and suffragettes and um, taking a really um, important part in the founding of our community. Absolutely. How does that compare with the research that you've done on pioneer women at the Job Carr Museum? Sure. So um, we collaborated and Deb worked with a whole team of women to help make this exhibit possible and the book and researching all of these stories of Tacoma's women. Uh, and at the Job Carr Museum, we're also working on things like a uh, walking tour of yes. women's stories and going out in the community and seeing the, the homes where they lived, the places where they had their businesses, um, and, and bringing those stories to life. I love that. So, Deb, you mentioned that you are in the process of creating some curriculum, but you brought <clears throat> a book with you, which I am so excited about. And yes, I got an autographed copy after I forced you to write in a book. So tell us about the book. So the book is the fourth now in our series of 21 Tales. It's stories about Tacoma and its history. And this one is called Leading Ladies, and it is 21 of Tacoma's Women of Destiny. So we did stay with the 21, but I could not limit to 21. So in the back of the book, you'll find many, many lists of more 21. Thank you. You'll find 21 firsts. You'll find 21 record breakers. Uh, you'll also find the 21 women who have served on a selection committee to help me choose a balance of people from each decade of Tacoma, from different career fields, from different ethnicities. And inside the back cover, I'm really proud that you'll find a list of 21 women who supported the project. Oh. We didn't go out to a foundation. We asked women to support it, and they pulled out their checkbooks, and they wrote checks to support it. And because of that, we were able to give 1,600 copies away to our schools so that libraries will have classroom packs so that teachers can use those to teach those curriculum materials. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you, thank you. So of the 21, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm talking about your children here. Uh, do you have a favorite? So I want you to answer that first, and Holly, I want you to pick one too. Um, I think Cornelia Lasley mm -hmm. jumped out at me. Why? Um, she was the first African-American teacher in the state of Washington to be hired to teach in Tacoma Public Schools. And she was hired at Lincoln High School in 1946. And the principal looked at her resume, thought she was qualified, went to interview her and went, oops, uh, what do I do? And then he said, wait a minute, you're qualified on paper. Why can't I hire you? And she said to him, do you think it'll work? And he said, I'll support you. We'll try it. Oh, boy. And so when she died, actually quite unexpectedly, she was the head of the mathematics department at Lincoln. She was treasurer of state teacher associations. And I think the best part is, as Kim Davenport has been around talking with students as part of her Lincoln district book, she has come across adults who have said she was one of my favorite teachers. Oh, I love that. So that brings that full circle. It sure does, and that Lincoln District is so rich with history, as yep. so many of our districts are. Holly, yep. what stands out for you, or who stands out for you? So my favorite um, is included in, in the list of 21 firsts, mm -hmm. and it's Estelle Bradish, Bradish Mann, or Stella, and she was the first public official female in Tacoma. Um, she was the first woman in Pierce County to serve on a jury. She was the first floral shop owner in Tacoma. Uh, she worked in the newspapers and um, would go in and report on the courts down in Stillicum. She had all of these great, amazing things that she was doing back in the 1870s and 1880s, long before the um, women were allowed so to So worthy, vote or worthy of the 21, yes. Absolutely. Where can we find this book? 
Well, at our museum at yes. 919 Pacific, mm -hmm. and also the Evans family at uh, Pacific Northwest Shop and Proctor Perfect. are proud to carry it. So, um, Holly, let's talk about the Tacoma Her Story Society. It's been a very busy group um, with events every month. Uh, tell us what's coming up. So in April is uh, the annual meeting of Tacoma Her Story Society, and as part of that, um, I am one of seven women who are going to be portraying um, little vignettes of these women who uh, were important in Tacoma's story and bringing their their stories right to life in front of you. Great. Uh, and Karen Haas is the wonderful coordinator of our uh, group of, of uh, dramatists, and so Good. we're going to be bringing those right in front of your eyes and you can come in and see those. Uh, yep. And then the um, exhibit is up through September 7th. Great, go see it, go see it. Okay, last minute here. Goes by so quickly. Uh, there's something coming up here which I believe I have had the privilege and honor of being asked to MC, which I will. Deb, tell them what it is. So each fall we do a Destiny Dinner, which is a huge fundraiser for us, and we do a different theme of our community each year. And so this fall, that dinner will be kind of the finale of this exhibit, and we'll be looking at her story in our big Destiny Dinner. And I believe you have graciously agreed I to MC that event. Have, so I thank you for that. Oh, I'm honored. So um, I know that we want to thank the women who helped research the book and the exhibit, also, these strong women who broke all these barriers, made histories, made her, her story by balancing their busy life and raising families. Um, is there anybody else in this last 10 seconds we need to thank? Thank did you, I do Holly, it? for coming in. You <laughs> did it. Thank you. I want to thank both of you so much uh, for just for everything. My heart is soaring. This is such a wonderful thing for you to do. I thank you so much for those little, little girls who are going to go to this exhibit and be inspired to be all that they can be. And both of you and the women behind you are to thank for that. So thank you, thank you. for wearing the sash and carrying the torch. And I want you back on the couch soon. All right, thank deal? You. deal? Deal. When we come back after just a little bit of musical chairs, which you'll get to watch during the break, Downtown on the Go will be here to talk about their new event, you don't want to miss that. We'll be right back.